William Pulteney was born in March of 1684 in Leicestershire and was educated at Westminster School and at Christchurch thereafter. After acquiring extensive classical knowledge, he left Oxford and toured the continent. Then, in 1705, he was brought into Parliament by Henry Guy for the Yorkshire Borough of Hedon. He held this seat until 1734. Throughout the reign of Queen Anne, Pulteney played a prominent part in the struggles of the Whigs, including being involved in the prosecution of Henry Sacheverell. When the Tories were victorious at the 1710 general election, in part due to the backlash of Sacheverell's prosecution, Pulteney's friend Robert Walpole was imprisoned in the Tower of London in 1712 due to accusations of corruption. Pulteney often spoke out against his imprisonment and championed Walpole's cause in the House of Commons and accompanied other Whigs in visits to him in prison. In 1714, Pulteney married Anna Maria, who bore him one son. She died in 1758. Also in 1714, Pulteney became Secretary of War, an office he held until 1717, and was also on the Committee of Secrecy on the Treaty of Utrecht, formed in the April of 1715. He also became a Privy Councillor in 1716, and when Walpole's brother-in-law, friend and comrade Charles Townsend was dismissed from his position of Lord Lieutenant in Ireland, Walpole resigned. This was followed by the retirement of Pulteney. However, as Walpole was a very active member of the opposition against the government, Lord Stanhope and Lord Sunderland, the heads of the ministry, had to reconcile with him and Townsend, and they were returned to their positions. Soon after this, the South Sea Company collapsed in 1720, where the government had attempted to use this company in order to reduce the national debt. The following year, a committee investigated this scandal and discovered corruption on the part of many in the cabinet, included in those names were Stanhope and Sunderland. This led to their resignations and Stanhope's death. However, Walpole was able to save them from imprisonment and therefore became the most powerful member of the house. Pulteney expected to be reinstated as a member of the cabinet, however, felt snubbed when Walpole only offered him a peerage. He rejected the offer, however, in 1723 he agreed to accept the lucrative but insignificant post of Cofferer of the household. Pulteney found himself neglected and he be then began to oppose Walpole. Walpole's proposition to discharge the debts of the civil list, those who are paid by the government for a service or as honorary pensions, was opposed by Pulteney. In 1725 he was dismissed from his position. From the day of his dismissal, Pulteney remained in opposition and formed the Patriot Whigs. These were a group of fellow Whigs who felt that Walpole was corrupt and tyrannical. Walpole attempted to calm down their opposition by offering them Townsend's place in the ministry, alongside a peerage. This, however, was rejected. Pulteney's hatred was not confined to his speeches within Parliament, however, and alongside Lord Bolingbroke, he started a periodical in 1726 called The Craftsman. Within this, he incessantly denounced Walpole for many years, alongside fighting off attacks on the craftsman itself. It didn't matter the occasion, Pulteney was ready with a pamphlet to denounce the government. On one occasion, he was even challenged to a duel by Lord Hervey, and on another, he was, in July 1731, struck off the role of Privy Councillors and dismissed from the Commission of the Peace in several counties. In print, Pulteney was inferior to Bolingbroke alone among the antagonists of Walpole, but in Parliament, from which Bolingbroke was excluded, he excelled. When the sinking fund was appropriated in 1733, he led the denunciation. When the excise scheme in the same year was stirring popular feeling to its lowest depths, the passion of the multitude broke out in his oratory speeches. Walpole, however, managed to avoid the fall of his ministry. Bolingbroke withdrew to France on the suggestion, it is said, of Pulteney, and the opposition was weakened by the dissensions of the leaders. From the general election of 1734 until his elevation to the peerage, Pulteney sat for Middlesex. For some years after this election, the minister's assailants made little progress in their attack, but in 1738, the troubles with Spain supplied them with the opportunity which they desired. Walpole long argued for peace, but he was feebly supported by his own cabinet, and the frenzy of the people for war knew no bounds. In a divisive moment for his own reputation, he consented to remain in office and to gratify popular passion with a war against Spain. His downfall was not long deferred. War was declared in 1739, a new parliament was summoned in the summer of 1741, and over the divisions on the election petitions, the ministry of Walpole collapsed. The task of forming the new administration was, after some delay, entrusted to Pulteney, who offered the post of First Lord of the Treasury, basically the position of Prime Minister, to the Earl of Wilmington, and contented himself with a seat in the cabinet and a peerage, still hoping to retain his supremacy in the ministry. 
This made him unpopular, however, and his influence dwindled to nothing. Horace Walpole, son of Robert Walpole, asserts that when Pulteney wished to withdraw from the peerage, it was forced upon him by the king, and another chronicler of the times records that when Walpole and Pulteney met in the House of Lords, the one as Earl of Orford, the other as Earl of Bath, the remark was made by Orford, here we are, my lord, the two most insignificant fellows in England. On 14th of July 1742, Pulteney was created Baron Pulteney of Hayden, Viscount Pulteney of Rington, Somerset, and Earl of Bath. On the 20th of February, he had been restored to his rank in the Privy Council. At Wilmington's death in 1743, he made application to the King for the post of First Lord of the Treasury, only to find that it had been conferred on Henry Pelham. On the 10th of February 1746, Pelham's administration resigned en masse, and the King turned to Pulteney to form an alternative ministry. He accepted the seals of office and made nominations to the most senior posts. However, it quickly became clear that he did not have enough support to form a viable government. After 48 hours, 3 quarters, 7 minutes and 11 seconds, he abandoned the attempt. This forced the King to accept Henry Pelham and his brother's terms for a resuming office. Due to his failed attempt to form a government, Pulteney was on the receiving end of much ridicule. After this, all Pulteney's career yielded was either an occasional pamphlet or an infrequent speech. In 1762, he served as treasurer of the Salop Infirmary in Shrewsbury, and then two years later, on the 7th of July, 1764, he died at the age of 80.